Think of the fastest supercar you can come up with, and then envision pulling up to the lights and being humiliated by an electric economy car. It doesn't matter what supercar you were thinking of, it's not as fast as an electric car. No way, no how. And that's because you didn't sit through the entire six minute long red light in launch control at the engine's power peak all No, that's not what happened. You were sitting there at idle. Meanwhile, the electric car was silently waiting to humiliate you. It's always in launch control, and it almost always is at its power peak. If you've already driven an electric car in town, you've probably already come to the very upsetting conclusion that nothing is as fast as an electric car. And that's because of one thing, how it responds. No internal combustion car has ever responded as quickly to your right foot as a run-of-the-mill EV, and that's for three reasons. Number one, motor response. Number two, multiple gears in the transmission. And number three, speed isn't just about peak power. Let's think about all of the things that have to happen to get your engine from zero to max output. First, you slam your foot down on the gas pedal, which sends an electronic signal to a computer, which then processes that command and sends another electronic signal back to a throttle actuator, a motor that opens the throttle valve. Air can start to rush past there, getting rid of the vacuum that's in the manifold and the runners and slowly filling the manifold and the runners. And once that's done, the air can start, after it waits its turn, going past the intake valve and getting sucked into the cylinder. Then the air gets compressed by the piston and fuel gets injected and then the whole thing gets lit on fire. That explosion pushes the piston back down with greater force, thus helping the other pistons go up with greater force. And once a bunch of cylinders have done this, then the engine will finally be at its maximum output. In a quick responding, naturally aspirated engine, that whole process could take something like a quarter or a half of a second. Although in modern cars, it's typically slowed down even further so you can appear like a smoother driver. Anyway, speaking of modern cars, then you have the turbocharger. Depending on where you are in the rev range, it could take one, two, or three seconds for the turbocharger to get to max boost. In the time it took that engine to respond, an electric powertrain could have gone from zero to max output and back literally tens of thousands of times. A typical electric car powertrain responds instantly. Well, technically not instantly, but almost. Regardless, faster than we can perceive, and it doesn't actually matter how fast it responds, because in any case, it's way faster than you can press the gas pedal in the first place. <laughs> so, we have a motor that effectively responds instantly to your requests, and that's not even the actual reason why EVs are so much faster. It's because they only have one gear. Except for that stupid Porsche Taycan, which is basically Germany's attempt at ruining this video. Multiple gears means multiple downshifts, and even the world's fastest transmissions take their good old time to downshift. Even if they could downshift instantly, which they can't, it wouldn't matter because the engine could never raise its revs quickly enough to match it. Let's talk about why engines require multiple gears. It's because they have a minimum speed below which they cannot operate, that's called idle speed, and a maximum speed above which they send shards of molten metal flying everywhere. With just one gear and no clutch, your gas-powered car might have a minimum speed of five miles an hour and a maximum speed of like 50. That would make highway cruising very loud, very slow, and very inefficient. But that's not nearly as bad as traffic, where every time you had to come to a stop, you'd stall the car, or, or even worse, you start the car in the morning and you fly right through the living room. Hi, honey! Electric motors, on the other hand, don't have a minimum speed. They can start and stop as they wish. And while they do have a maximum speed, that's usually determined by software, not because they're gonna come flying apart if they spin any faster. They also don't make more noise and vibration as they spin more quickly, so it doesn't really matter how fast an electric motor is spinning. Which leads me to my final point. Piston engines don't make their peak power until they're just about to explode. Electric motors, on the other hand, make their peak power throughout the majority of their operating range. And torque? Well, put it this way. The six and a half liter V12 in the Lamborghini Aventador at 1,000 RPM makes about 70 pound-feet of torque. 
at that same speed, a Tesla Model S powertrain makes about 487. And while the sound of that Lamborghini V12 does things to my body that I'm not being paid to talk about, I do have to point out that the Aventador is rated at nine miles per gallon and a Model S is rated at the equivalent of 104. This is the silver bullet for internal combustion engines. We no longer have a trade-off between performance and efficiency. And that means we can not only have our cake, but eat it too. Which means I'm gonna get fat. Er. You're not an idiot. You know how this stuff works. Like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to check out the Haggerty Drivers Club.